Welcome back to some new r slash malicious compliance stories, where people comply to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. I hope you had a great day. The first story is called Wait on Confirmation. I'm due to start at 8 a.m., but it's comfy in bed, so I roll out at 8 a.m. when my alarm goes off, logging to my laptop at 8.04 a.m. and start loading stuff up. Teams, Outlook, Notepad, OneNote, Internet Explorer, etc. I notice that the ticket system we use is showing service unavailable. I refresh, clear the cage and try again. Same error. I checked with my team and confirmed that another morning user is having the same issue. I then proceeded to check with one of our first line team members, who confirms they are having the issue and a ticket has been raised for it. So it's just a waiting game. Fine by me. I can do some home chores. Ultimately, a major incident kind of ticket is raised. Turns out this is system wide and is affecting folk in multiple various locations. At 10.20 am, we got a message from our manager. From the major incident, do not attempt to log in until we confirm. We need to restart servers due to the load of many users attempting to access it. Of course, there's always one. One of my teammates comes into the chat at 10.56 am. I've refreshed and it's taken me straight in. Can I start using it? Bear in mind, there's been no confirmation. No email, no message, no chat update. Nothing. I point out this is what we were told specifically not to do. But the colleague attempts to justify this with technicalities. Technically, I didn't log in. To me, refresh means to bring up the login page, etc. The logic baffles me. But this is the type of person who always wants to be at the forefront and in the spotlight, taking the attention, displaying his prowess and leadership. Look at how proactive and amazing I am. And who needs unions to negotiate a pay rise? If we just accept this, then next year, we might all get what we want. This last bit about the union and pay were his exact words. Anyways, it's 11.42 am right now. I've had nearly 4 hours of being paid for not working, due to everything we do coming via our ticket system. On the one hand, technically it appears to be working. On the other hand, I have not as of yet received this confirmation that we can log in. So I guess I just continue to sit here until I do. I wonder how long it will take to get this confirmation. I can't log in till I do. The next story is called Very Nice to See You. For many years, my family would take trips with other family members. All of these trips had one thing in common. My aunt, uncle and cousins would be late for everything. This used to really irritate my parents, who are pretty punctual and have a lot more kids to organize, four of us, compared to my two cousins. By mutual agreement, any other family involved in these outings decided to go along with my parents and give aunt and uncle the wrong time. For example, if an event started at 11 am, they'd be told 10 am. This was pretty effective, until aunt and uncle started to realize that they were being given the wrong time. I believe other family members explained why that was, and that they were fed up with always waiting on them or being late. Self-awareness not being very apparent that they were the issue, it was decided by them that it wasn't their fault. And they told my parents, give us the right time from now on and you'll see, we aren't the problem. My parents, especially my mom, hates the idea of people missing out on something, but is also prepared to let a natural consequence occur if it's not too harsh. The very next week, we had a day trip booked on the ferry. This was something we did once a year, over to the UK and back in one day, fondly known as a Woos cruise back in the day, due to the opportunity to purchase cheap alcohol. Kids would explore the ship and when we docked, buy sweets that we couldn't get at home. It was something everyone looked forward to a lot. It was the early 90s. With the best will in the world, the ferry waits for no man. So it was a sad day for four people who were told the ferry left at 8 am sharp, the correct time, and who arrived after 8.30 to see a small, ferry-shaped speck in the distance, heading towards the UK. 
Sadly, it did not make them any more punctual after that, but they were always told the correct time as requested, and if they were late, we didn't wait anymore. For months, whenever we'd see them after that, my parents used to cheerily rave and say, very nice to see you. The last story is called Cost-Cutting Measures. I worked for a large international accounting firm with offices all over the country. Our boss, Karen, was well liked until she became the boss, a smiling assassin type who only cared about her position and looking good in front of the higher ups. All about the numbers. Even if what we had to do to get to those numbers didn't make sense. My team, about 12, was primarily based in the London office, but once a week, per my contract and everyone else's, we are required to work in a remote office, ages from London. This place was miserable, a building in the middle of nowhere, one tiny corner shop for snacks, next to a motorway. The closest place to eat was a 15 minutes drive away. We all hated it, but hey ho, it was only once a week. When our boss got promoted, her life mission was to cut costs. At one point, she decided that the miserable location should be our primary office and she wanted us all to go there 4 days a week instead of one. All but one of our team were living in London. This meant for me a 2.5 hour journey one way instead of one hour. After a few months, this really took its toll. The assistant manager, a friend of mine, told me she said in passing to him that this office was less of a cost on our team's budget than the London office. What a shock. I decided to speak to HR and see what my options are. Maybe get an exception. Turns out we had a policy that anything over your normal travel hours to the closest office location from your home could be used as your working hours. The extra one and a half hours each way would be considered working hours. So I could arrive at 10.30 instead of 9.00 am and leave at 4 instead of 5.30. Also, if trains and things were delayed or cancelled, that would also be included in working hours. This happened often, as this place was in the middle of nowhere. So I often arrived at 11.30. I forwarded the emails from HR to her and explained how I would be complying with this policy. She agreed, but tried in a meeting to tell me this was an exception for me and to not tell anyone else. Well, I told everyone else, and we all began complying with the policy. This meant we spent less time in the office, and productivity dwindled. She mentioned this a lot in meetings. I would often, respectfully, point out that it didn't make sense to force us to travel to this office. I was the main one speaking up about this. At some point, maybe a few months later, she told me I could go back to 5 days in the London office, but again, this was a special arrangement for me and that she appreciated me and was making accommodations only for me. She also said she would tell everyone that I had special circumstances that allowed me this arrangement and to keep our conversation confidential. I honestly think she just got fed up with me pointing out how our productivity is lower only because she made us travel there 4 days a week. Of course, I complied, but the team noticed I wasn't with them. And let's just say, it caused a bit of a riot. I didn't say anything, but they figured it out themselves. Slowly but surely, one after the other, my colleagues started joining me in London, getting their own special arrangements with her. At some point, the majority was in London. Eventually, it was just her and the only other local colleague at this office. While we were in London, we all had a good chuckle about when she would cave. It took a good few weeks. Then we got the email that our permanent location going forward would be London and the one local employee to the terrible office would work from home and come in once a month. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.